Let's move on to question number two of the English language paper one exam. This question is important and you kind of need to spend a little bit of time considering what your responses are and then of course writing it out. So I would suggest for question number two, allocate around 10 minutes for this question before you move on. Let's answer question number two. Again, remember that we have already read this question. And as I've mentioned, this question, the great thing about it is you actually have the evidence right there in front of you. You don't have to worry about looking at the insert. You can do that for the other questions. However, you don't really need to go back over this insert unless you wish to, all right? So what I'm gonna do and what I would do for in exam conditions, I probably just would focus in on highlighting just uh, elements for this, uh, rather from this extract to answer this question, okay? So remember, you're told to look in, this de uh, in detail at this extract just beneath here, how does the writer use language? Here, to describe the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I've now read the insert and now know why it's so important for me to focus on language features that describe this T-Rex, okay? It's like a really terrifying opponent against these uh, men. And you're asked to include the writer's choice of words and phrases, language features and techniques, as well as sentence forms. So remember for this question, you wanna spend a maximum of 10 minutes. I'll suggest writing two so this is a minimum of two peel paragraph remember peel paragraphs are point evidence explanation link all right so the point is you're answering the question directly your evidence you're embedding your quotations from here your explanation this is where you talk about language technique also within the evidence you can include word level analysis after you talk about language technique and of course in your link back to the question you want to talk about the effect on the reader what image in this case of the tyrannosaurus rex how does this vividly impact us okay how is it described how are we made to feel remember the extract my interpretation of the t-rex as it's shown in the extract is that it's this really menacing creature which will kill inevitably kill these men all right so when you're picking out the relevant information from here, I would say I would suggest picking out one quotation just from the top and then something from the end. OK, don't pick out both of your pieces of evidence just from the top. All right. So I would probably uh, just quickly reread this and skim read it and probably highlight as I'm going along. OK, so it came on great old resilient striding legs. So this is interesting. All right. So these are interesting adjectives towered above half of the trees. It was a great evil god okay so here it's also uh, and i'd highlighted the same thing in the insert okay so it's this evil god and uh, folding his delicate watchmaker's claws close to this oily reptilian chest it's each lower leg was a piston a thousand pounds of white bone sunk in thick ropes of muscle sheathed over a gleam of pebbled skin like armor of a terrible warrior so this is really really powerful vivid imagery now here I probably would stop reading the rest of this because I've picked out lots of stuff already and I can't even use all of this, okay? So I'm probably gonna skip to uh, the final last two sentences or even just the final sentence. It closes its mouth in the death grin. So here we've got a smile, which is really menacing. It's ran its pelvic bones crushing aside trees and bushes, its taloned feet clawing the damp earth, leaving prints six inches deep. Okay, so here it's so heavy as it steps, it kind of leaves these deep footprints wherever it's settled its weight. Okay, so here I probably would also highlight probably that it crushed trees all right the crushed trees as if it was nothing all right so as you can see i've highlighted lots of stuff but really to be honest i'm only writing two pill paragraphs so i'm probably going to just focus in on these adjectives great old resilient striding legs the evil god element maybe if i'm inspired perhaps this uh, idea of it skin like armor okay again i'm probably not going to use all of this but i'm really now focusing in and of course this death grin it's smile which is really really menacing and it's crushing these trees all right so i've picked out the relevant evidence here as i mentioned you want to spend a maximum of 10 minutes two pill paragraph at least of course if you can do more than two peel paragraphs in that 10 minutes even better however if you can write two really really good detailed peel paragraphs within the space of 10 minutes meaning you've got five minutes for peel paragraph number one five minutes for peel paragraph number two then move on okay and let's make sure you're always really disciplined with your timekeeping okay so it's always good to make sure you have a watch okay so i'm going to begin with the first Pill paragraph using this information in terms of how the writer uses language to describe the T-Rex. And of course, remember, I'm talking about words, but also uh, this bullet point talks about sentence forms. So this could be, for instance, things like, you know, the use of this declarative sentence. Declarative sentence is a sentence that states a fact, feeling, or mood. Is there an imperative sentence, like the way Eccles was being told, get out, sit down, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing like that. All of that stuff that can also be included in sentence forms, okay? 
So now I've selected this information, I'm gonna write the first pill paragraph and then afterwards I will explain and walk you through how I put it together. All right, so let's go over the first peel paragraph, point evidence explanation link, okay? So what I decided to do is, of course, as I mentioned, I used this initial bit of evidence, okay, for my first peel paragraph. I'm gonna begin by reading it through and then I'll break it down how, you know, how you can put it together and what you should consider when writing this down, okay? Firstly, the writer effectively uses language to portray the Tyrannosaurus Rex, brackets, T-Rex, as powerful, vast, and imposing. Its appearance is petrifying as it stood on speech marks, great oiled resilient striding legs, close speech marks, and it seemed to be speech marks, a great evil god, close speech marks. The author's use of the metaphor, speech marks, evil god, close speech marks, conveys how fearsome the T-Rex is. This metaphor is ironic as we usually think of gods as benevolent, yet this creature is devilish and terrifying. The adjective resilient gives us the impression that it is unstoppable, casting doubts in our minds whether the men can kill it. Therefore, the author vividly shows just how powerful and unstoppable this creature is, okay? So that's my peel paragraph. So let's go through how I started off with my point. Now, one thing you'll notice is, I usually don't encourage the use of brackets, okay, within writing. However, given that this creature and the name of this main creature is so long, Tyrannosaurus Rex, your examiners won't expect you to keep on writing Tyrannosaurus Rex, okay, you're in a rush, all right? So what you should do is, for anything in your exams, which is a fairly long sentence or a long word, Write out the long word initially, so I first write it out, as you can see here, Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, what you can do, you put in brackets, a brief shortened version. Um, again, I've used like a well-known shortened version, okay? So for example, if you're given something about the European Union, let's say that as another example. Everyone knows we refer to the European Union as the EU. You can then put first out, European Union, brackets EU, and then you can put EU, okay? So use obviously a well-known substitute for the longer word, okay? However, that's the only one of the very few instances and the rare instances you can use brackets. Usually, I would suggest stay away from them in your essay writing. That's a, a really long kind of um, caveat, a kind of, you know, a by the way. However, let's go back to the, the peel paragraph, okay? So I started off with my point. Firstly, the writer effectively uses language to portray the Tyrannosaurus Rex as powerful, vast and imposing. As you can see in my opening point, I have used the key words, language, describe Tyrannosaurus Rex in my opening point. I am indicating to my examiner, hey, I know what I'm being asked to do, so I'm, you know, I'm using the same words that you've asked me to focus in on, okay? This is not obvious, you need to try and do this in your answer, okay? So that's my point. Let's look at my evidence. Its appearance is petrifying, which means scary, okay, use ambitious language. Its appearance is petrifying as it stood on great oil resilient striding legs and it seemed to be a great evil god. Here I've embedded my quotations. The first quotation which I used, great oiled uh, resilient striding legs, here, and I've also used the evil god. I decided not to use it like the armor, okay. As I mentioned, I've highlighted all of this stuff, but you don't have to use it. You can use even just great oil strident resilient legs, okay. Now, as I'd mentioned, I've embedded my phrases, meaning if I were to remove the speech marks in front of great old resilient striding legs and also the speech marks around great evil god the sentence would still make sense okay try to use your evidence in this way try to embed your evidence of course if you can't you can just say the passage states colon and then that okay but try to get used to embedding your phrases all right so you've got your point you've got your evidence here okay now let's look at my explanation. As I mentioned in my explanation I'm going to mention technique and also within the explanation this is where you can mention word level analysis okay the author's use of the metaphor, evil god, so again, I've uh, highlighted what metaphor this is I'm talking about, conveys how fearsome the T-Rex is. This metaphor is ironic as we usually think of gods, and again here I've put in speech marks a god, okay, as benevolent, which means loving. Yet this creature is devilish, right? Because of course, if it's an evil god, that's what we think of as devils, right? So the author is using this in an ironic way. So the, the creature is devilish and terrifying. 
The adjective resilience, now here I've done some word level analysis, okay? So the adjective resilient, and I've put that in speech marks again, gives us the impression that it is unstoppable, casting doubts in our minds whether the men can kill it, all right? So that is my explanation. This is now the analytical depth that I'm going into, okay? And this is where the bulk of your marks are. The explanation where you're talking about technique and you're talking about the writer's use of words and phrases, all right? So I've talked about metaphor and I've also mentioned and pointed out, you know, uh, the adjective and why this is important. Now let's look back at my link back to the question. Therefore, the author vividly shows just how powerful and unstoppable the creature is, okay? So I've linked it back to the idea of this type Tyrannosaurus rex being powerful and how language is being used to describe the T-Rex, all right? So that's my first pill point. And as I mentioned, because this is worth eight marks, this is, I would suggest this is probably worth four marks. You still need to write your second pill paragraph to guarantee yourself the full eight marks, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm now going to use the second bit of evidence that I've highlighted here and use that for my second pill paragraph. So I'm going to write out my second pill paragraph and then explain it and walk it through, walk you through it afterwards. All right. So let's look at my second pill paragraph. I'm gonna read it and then break down for you how I put it together. Secondly, the writer describes just how menacing and threatening the T-Rex is through their language. As it approached the men, it had a death grin. And as it walked, it was easily crushing trees and bushes as if they were mere toys in its way. The writer's use of hyperbole to describe the T-Rex's speech marks, death, grin, close speech marks, in this declarative sentence conveys how frightening the T-Rex looks. The verb crushing speech marks reveals its awesome force. We as readers feel terrified as we wonder whether this creature will kill the men. Hence the writer vividly uses language to convey how odd and truly terrifying the T-Rex's appearance is, okay? So let's first begin with my second point. And as you can see here, what I did, if we look back at the brief extract that was presented, I used death grin towards the end here, as well as crushing, okay? And also uh, I related it to the trees and bushes, okay? So let's go over how I put together my point. Secondly, the writer describes just how menacing and threatening the T-Rex is through their language, okay? So this is my point. I've talked about how the T-Rex is menacing and threatening. That's the point. And again, I've used keywords from the question to begin my point to make it clear to the examiner, hey, I'm answering the question, okay? Let's look at the evidence. As it approached the men, it had a speech marks, death grin, closed speech marks as the first embedded piece of evidence. And as it walked, it was easily open speech marks, crushing trees and bushes, close speech marks, as if there were mere toys in its way. So that's my evidence. And again, as you can see here, I have related it directly back to death grin and crushing aside uh, trees and bushes, okay? Now, uh, so actually I would probably, now going back, and this is probably why it's really good to read over your answer, I'd skipped crushing aside. So I'm gonna put ellipsis here, right? So that's the evidence. Now let's look at the explanation. The writer's use of hyperbole, which means over-exaggeration, to describe the T-Rex's death grin in this declarative sentence conveys how frightening the T-Rex looks. The verb crushing reveals its awesome force, okay? So this is the explanation. And actually, this even extends to we as readers feel terrified as we wonder whether this creature will kill the men, okay? So to be honest, reader's effect can either go into your link or your explanation. However, I would say that this is part of my explanation, okay? Now, really quickly, as you can see, I've not only mentioned language, okay, hyperbole, and also done a word level analysis, which is focusing on a verb. Remember one of the bullet points in this question, which is why question number two sometimes can be a little bit surprising and, you know, a little bit Bit tricky is because one of the bullet points says look at sentence form so I'd say to be on the safe side mention for example a declarative sentence okay declarative sentence is a sentence that states a fact feeling or mood we speak a majority of stories are written with declarative sentence just telling you what's happening okay so that's a good safe bet and hence why I've mentioned it here okay as part of my explanation so I've talked about hyperbole I've talked about verb but I've also just to be covered for that final bullet point I've talked about declarative sentence okay and of course I've explained how this is making, you know, this T-Rex look really scared and we realize this awesome force, this overwhelming force, okay? And thus we feel really terrified because of course it's menacing as I've mentioned in my point, okay? 
Now let's look at my link back to the question. Hence the writer vividly uses language to convey how odd and truly terrifying the T-Rex's appearance is. It's odd because it's smiling, okay? That's that's really scary. Usually we think of monsters as not grinning. They're just like, they look really serious and scary, okay? However, that's what even makes it more petrifying. It's really odd, it's bizarre, and thus truly terrifying. So that's the link back to the question. And again, I've linked it back to the question, emphasizing some of the key words, the use of language, and of course, ref referring back to the T-Rex, showing my examiner them answering the question and I'm staying focused. So when it comes to question number two, I would suggest if of course you have time to write a third peel paragraph, that's great, go for it, okay? However, if you only have enough time in the 10 minutes allocated for this question, write a minimum of two pill paragraphs. Paragraph number one, which talks about words and phrases taken from the opening, and then pill paragraph number two, which is taken from towards the closing bit of the extract that's put before you. So that's really it when it comes to answering question number two for this paper.